Hello, we're speaking with Margaret Morris, Boeing Vice President of Directed Energy Systems. Laser as a weapon system has been around for many years, but in science fiction books and movies. How close are we to using lasers in the battlefield? Yes, we're very close to fielding the systems now. We've uh, um, tested with a prototype system out of White Sands and Eglin Air Force Base and had very good results. And we know that if we were to field an operational system, there's some changes we would make to the system, improve the design. But the technology is there and it's sound and the acquisition tracking pointing part of the system is very well proven. What processes have to be moved forward before a laser weapon is deployed? We have to make the beam control system a little more compact and to make it a little more rugged and reliable in the field and able to stay clean because of all the optics. So we're working on, on our own internal funding, the next generation beam control system. The software, the methodology, all of that's fairly mature and it's based upon years and years of work that we've done. Um, if we were to field a system, we'd integrate it on another vehicle. For the U.S. Army, we'd integrate it on a combat vehicle and not the Oshkosh truck that you saw because they need something that's more mobile and able to travel with the real troops. In the past, Israel and the U.S. have tried to develop the Nautilus weapon system against rockets. This effort has not resulted in a system. Do you see a laser used against ballistic missiles? They're studying those applications, but it takes a much higher power level. So with the, the power level that we have today, that's probably not a possibility, but it's definitely something that's being looked at as the laser technology matures. If this happens, will it make the current interceptors redundant? No, not necessarily. I would say that it would augment them. Is the laser cheaper to operate? Yes, it is because you just pay for the fuel to power the laser. So for example, with the, the system that, that we developed, we have a generator on board that's powered by diesel. And we like to say that it's 50 cents a shot, the cost of the diesel fuel to power the generator, which powers the battery. And is Boeing looking at more advanced laser weapons? Yes, we're always looking at research for future applications and we're trying to look at families of systems so that you have as much reuse as possible. And certainly a lot of the software that's been developed can be used for more capable systems. But a lot of that work is further out in time, but it's important to invest internally, you know, looking to the future and not just look at what you can do today. Can you see lasers used against tanks and even soldiers? They're looking at those applications. You know, we, we have a compact laser system that we've looked at. We can set um, cars on fire. We can cut power conduits. You know, we can, we can do things to objects out in the field. If you had higher power, you could do things to more capable objects. I don't know how much we've thought about tanks. They're armored, and that would be a very difficult target. But, um, you know, some of the other things you mentioned, I think, are within the realm of the possible. Do you think that in the future, laser weapons will become widely used for many other applications? It's like any new emerging technology. You know what you know, but you don't know what you don't know. What is the main problem before that future breakthrough happens? The main problem is getting the higher power laser. And it, it takes a certain amount of cooling and but I don't think the gener generator is the limiting technology right now I would say the the high power laser is thank you mrs morse